Wow! Hello everybody, and thank you so much for helping me achieve my second goal of my active YouTube channel. Um, that goal was 16 subscribers, and all 16 of you helped me reach that. And I just wanted to put up this video to say thank you, I'm very appreciative, and I have something special for you today. Um, recently, me and my friend, Yoshi401, we did a Pokemon race-ish type thing, and we set up like a point system, so for however many Pokemon you caught, you, you earn so much points, or like hidden items, you, you found an item, you get some points, and I thought it was a cool idea to uh, share uh, the outcome with you. Yeah, I definitely look forward to that, and enjoy! Hello everybody, it is Wout's Charles here with Yoshi401. Hello. And we are doing my 16 subscriber special, which, where we did a fun, fun little game match between us two called the Pokemon Gold Rush, as Yoshi401 coined it as. I'm that clever. Yes. <laughs> Very clever indeed. And, um, yeah. I just wanted to share the results. I thought that would be an interesting video and special to kind of get an insight on, you know, what has been happening outside of other stuff that's been going on, um, I guess. And yeah, so what we set up was a match between us two with a, um, a point scoring system in Pokemon Gold. So basically, we both played the same game around the same time and we had points assigned to certain things that we did in the game and then at the end we compared our scores and that's what we're going to share with you today so um, some of the some of the points categories we'll go over them all when we actually go over what points we scored but just a brief overview so that you don't go in diving first and you can kind of put your feet in the water some of the point values that we assigned were, you know, if you caught Pokemon, you got certain points. So, um, if it was rare, you got more than if it was common. And uh, if it was a legendary, say, if it was super rare, or if there was only one in the game. So, with Pokemon Gold specifically, there was the Shiny Gyarados and the Pseudo Wudo, uh, both notable of mention, as well as the Ho-Oh. Um, another category was phone numbers. That was important in the game, but yeah. And for every three, you, uh, the player got 100 points, and if they got all 26 phone numbers, they got a bonus of 1,000 points. So, do you want to explain some of the other categories? Um, sure. Did you did you say anything about the TMs? No. No? Okay. Um, each TM you collected was worth 100 points each, and that was excluding any TMs that you could buy or win in the game corner or anything like that. So we wrote those all down and we just excluded those. Um, one of the, a couple of the other things we did was that we had the your average level at the end of the game after you beat the Elite Four. That's as far as we went, only up to the Elite Four the first time. And then we divided that by the number of minutes played and then times that whole thing by 10,000. I wasn't the one who thought of the equation, it was mm -hmm. the, that, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, what was it, the money, oh, the yes. amount of money you had uh, at the end of the game divided by 100. Yeah. At first it was just money in general, and that was way too high of a score. <laughs> yes, way too much. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we kind of developed the scoring system as it went, seeing as it as it fit. So, for example, the money, it seemed to be a bit too high and overpowered just to have the amount of money be the amount of points scored. So we just divided or divided by 100 and uh, decreased the amount, the value that each dollar, pokey dollar is worth. And yeah, it was kind of a fun experimental kind of playthrough of the game, and definitely learning what we've done wrong or could be, do better will help us next time if if we do it again time will only tell so yeah 
Uh, this is just the beginning of hopefully what will might turn into something fun and traditional. So, um, both players had a different experience throughout the game, and I guess we could share our different experiences. Would you like me to start? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, I've been planning this very long, and I put a lot of thought into it at the beginning. Um, I had a set team thought about, and it was a pretty diabolical team, if I were to say so myself. However, when I got the game in my hand, things didn't turn out the way I was... the way I thought they would. For example, I had, to, I had planned to have a Heracross on my team, oh God. but then I realized maybe it would take a bit too long to headbutt like 10,000 trees and get a Heracross, and maybe I'll catch it. So, um, when I was in the game, before the first gym leader, the flying type, I thought to myself, I might need a second Pokemon. And at that instant, I immediately caught a Geodude, just out of impulse. <laughs> and that Geodude stuck with me to the very end much like many of the other Pokemon that I caught. Um, the Geodude and... Oh, my starter was a Cyndaquil, which I didn't even plan on using. However, that ended up changing, and I ended up using it. Um, those two took on many gyms together until I caught myself a Wooper, which is a little rascal. Um, anyway, my first gym battle... Or first gym battle. Third? Is it second? I can't remember. Third. Third gym battle, Whitney, um, was a pretty funny, like, um, out of the ordinary experience. I planned to lose that one because I always lose to Whitney, but for some reason during that battle, I did really well and I just got a lot of critical hits off and she missed a lot and it was just amazing. It's amazing. Ah. <sighs> Um, one Pokemon that I caught was Shelder, and Shelder was on, on my original team planned, along with a couple other Ice Pokemon that I was still unsure which one I wanted at the time, but Shelder seemed to be the best one to have, and it was the easiest to acquire, so I did. Turned out that I didn't have to use it at all, I didn't have to catch it at all, and then I also picked up an Eevee, hoping for a Jolteon. I realized that maybe a Jolteon was a bit too far of a dream for my um, gameplay, as a Thunderstone is next to impossible to collect before you beat the Elite Four. Uh, so, I couldn't have a Jolteon, and even if I did have a Jolteon, it wouldn't know an electric move until, like, level 40-something, which I was not planning on going into the mid-40s. So, the Eevee slowly fell useless. And finally, that brings us to my last encounter, which was my beloved Ho-Oh. The, the Ho-Oh I caught because I got rid of Eevee, and that turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made in the game, seeing as it was like 10 levels above all my other Pokemon, and it could take hit after hit and never faint, and it was a trooper. It's a true trooper. That, that dang ho -Oh. What a guy. He's a G. <laughs> ho -Oh the G. Oh, and my team for the Elite Four is Zatu. <laughs> Graveler. <laughs> Quagsire. <laughs> Shelder. Hello, and Koalaba. Okay. You didn't get a type version. No, I didn't get a type version. <laughs> I thought it evolved at level 32, and then once I hit 32, I was like, yes, type flows in time, and then it didn't evolve, and I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, that's awkward. Uh, so yeah, my experience was a bit not as I expected, but it ended up being really fun. How about you? Me? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, for one, did not have a planned team in the beginning. I was pretty much just gonna kinda jump straight into the deep end and just go for it. I pretty much was the exact opposite. I didn't have any plans, I didn't think this through for a long time. I was just kinda like, well, well, here goes nothing. So, um, in the beginning I chose Cyndaquil as well, but I did not use Cyndaquil because um, we had specified that starters and their evolution did not count for points. And I figured, why bother training up somebody who's not going to really give me much of anything? So I kind of just 
threw him in a PC box, and that was that. Um, then, yeah, I just kind of started catching random Pokemon, not necessarily specifically for my team or anything, just to catch Pokemon, because they're worth points, too. And then um, I came across a Bell Sprout that I actually was going to use, even though I knew it wasn't really possible to get a Leaf Stone anytime soon, but I figured why not. And then uh, one other thing that I really, that I did, um, that I usually don't do is I actually talked to people in the game. <laughs> so I walked into one of the houses in uh, Violet City and he was like, hey, I have an Onyx, do you want to trade for a Bellsprout? Or like, he wanted a Bellsprout and he had an Onyx and I was like, that would really help in the first gym. So I traded that for a um, my bell sprout for an onyx, and I had all like my random Pokemon that I had caught in the beginning, and I put a lot of them in the box, but I decided to keep a Pidgey that I had caught. So at the moment, my team was a Pidgey and, a, and an onyx, and then later on, I caught a Mareep too before I took on the gym just for a little bit of extra assistance. And as the game went on, this is this is a really long story about how my team kind of played out because I pretty much threw Pokemon in boxes and took them back out, and it was it's a mess. Hmm. <laughs> um, so I kept catching random Pokemon. I caught um, a Sandshrew for um, mainly just HMs and for cut basically, and Rock Smash. And when I went into Slowpoke Well, I did not expect to find a Slowpoke as the first Pokemon to find in there, so... And I realized I needed a water type, and I was like, that is that is awesome, I really want a slow bro. So I caught the Slowpoke. And then at that moment, um, my team was a Pidgeotto, Onix, Mareep, Sandshrew, and a Slowpoke. And this was going into the second gym, so I already had a lot of Pokemon with me. And, well, I'm not really going to go too much into all my gym battles, because they weren't really too significant. But, then, um, going up to the third gym, Whitney, I realized that having a fighting type would probably help me a lot. And I knew there was somebody in Goldenrod City who traded... Uh, I'm a chap for a drowsy. So I went and caught a drowsy and did that trade. And so Machop was added to my team. And he really was, actually she, was a girl, really was a good, uh, great, like, you know, she was just awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put it at that. The champ's a champ. Just kidding. I know. <laughs> um, then my Onyx, I, I started not really wanting the onyx because it wasn't it wasn't obeying me because it was a traded pokemon but the machop was obeying me like better for some reason i don't even know why so i swapped out the onyx for an eevee later on that i could pick up and i was planning on evolving the eevee into an espeon or an umbreon whenever the um friendship evolution happened whether it was day or night i didn't really care um then I realized I don't really want the Sancher anymore. It's not really being any, like, doesn't have much significance right now because you don't. I realized there isn't really many times you need to use Cut in the Jodo region, so I kind of just put him away. And then I realized I really wanted a Fire type, so I went into the Burn Tower and caught a Magmar. Hmm. And then later on, I realized I didn't want the Eevee because it kept feigning and it was never gonna love me. <laughs> so I put the Eevee away. Forever alone. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so yeah, and then I, for a while I only had five Pokemon. At this point I had a Pidgeot, Namphros, Magmar, Slowpoke, and Machoke. And for a while it was only five Pokemon. And when I was about to go into ice, the ice path, I realized, you know, it'd be really smart for me to have an ice type because of Claire and Lance, so, um, so then I caught a Swinub, and that was pretty much my team for, that's, that was gonna be my set team for the Elite Four, a Pidgeot, uh, Pilot Swine, 
and Frost Magmar, Slowpoke, which I really wanted to evolve into a Slowbro, and Machoke. And then I did a little bit of research with the Slowpoke, and I realized that he wasn't going to learn Psychic until, like, not any- it wasn't going to be any time soon. And I realized I wasn't going to know Psychic by the time I got into the Elite Four, so I figured, you know what, I need a better water type. So I took the Shiny Gyarados that I caught, and I added him to my team, which was a really good decision. And then I got permission to do a trade with the Machoke to have it evolve into Machamp and just not count it for any points. And so my team going into the Elite Four was Pidgeot, <coughs> Piloswine, <coughs> Ampharos, <coughs> Magmar, <coughs> Gyarados, <coughs> to Machamp. <coughs> and... Oh god. <laughs> the Elite Four. <laughs> I tried... My first time trying the Elite Four, I pretty much got through the first four people with, with no problem whatsoever. I was battling Lance, and I was down to his level 50 Dragonite, and I was down to my Ampharos, which is like level 44, and I, I just tried so hard, I ran out of items and everything, and it was pretty much down to needing his Dragonite to miss his Outrage, because if he hit it, then I was dead. And it was just a really close battle. But I came back second time, I ripped him apart, and that, that was that. Yeah. That's my story. It just... <laughs> it's a really long story. Yeah, whole seven minutes <laughs> worth. How many minutes? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, eight. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and then we got the points breakdown. Okay, so... On to the points! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so, we'll just go right down through the um, official order of when we recorded them. So, we'll start with the caught Pokemon. Um, I, do you want to go first? I don't know. I think you should go first. Okay, I'll go first for all the categories and make it... Can, can, uh, I forget the word. Continuity. Okay. <laughs> um, for the caught Pokemon, this was for all the common Pokemon, rare or super rare Pokemon combined together. I got a total of 1,700 points. I got a total of 3,350. Which she totally crushed me in. <laughs> I about twice as much. Next category is the hidden items. This was for every hidden item that you found in the location, you got 100 points. I earned 700 points throughout my journeys for finding 7 items. And I found, and I got, uh, 1400. Yeah, and it also crushed me again by twice as much. <laughs> the next category is TMs, where you get 100 points for every TM you obtain, excluding certain TMs, headbutt and the punches. My score was 1,600. And mine was 1,700. Didn't crush me, but still crushed me. Next category is phone numbers, where you got 100 points for every three phone numbers, and if you collect all 26, you get a bonus of 1,000 points. I scored 200 points for having eight phone numbers. People didn't like me, so I did not get any phone numbers. Blum, blum, blum. Oh well. Alright, the next category was your average level, divided by minutes played, times 10,000, and that is added to your overall score. My average level was 36, divided by my minutes played, which was 792 minutes, or 13 hours, thir tw 13 hours 12 minutes, and then times 10,000 equaled 455 points. And my average level was 42, and my playtime was 942 minutes, or 15 hours and 42 minutes, and that had a point value of 449. So, a slight difference there, about six. Yes. Um, I'll just explain that category really quick. I, ex I intended for that equation to amount for, um, give more points to the player who had lower level Pokemon and beat the game faster. So, 
the combination of those two elements should result in a much higher score, which that equation did not work out the way I thought it would. However, since this was just a test run, kind of, um, it's not too important to me, so I'm not going to go reinvent the wheel, and I'll just accept that I got six more points in that category. <laughs> the next category was money, um, where the player's money was divided by 100 and then added to the overall score. The amount of points I earned for that category was 1,528. And I earned 2,256. Good. <laughs> uh, the next category was apricots, where for every apricot found, you multiply by 10, and then you add that to your overall score. I found 10 apricots, which multiplied by 10 gives you 100, so I earned 100 points in that category. And I found 14, so that gave me 140 points. And second to last category we have here is puzzles. For every in-game special event that you complete, you earn 1,000 points. These are all predetermined before the start of the match, just to clarify which ones count and which ones don't. What I did, I did the Ho-Oh puzzle and the Kabutops puzzle. I believe it is Kabuto, Kabutops, one of the two. Um, and each puzzle is worth 1,000 points, and since I completed two, I earned 2,000 points. I forgot about the puzzles. <laughs> so how many points did you earn? Over 9,000. <sighs> no. <laughs> None. No points. And the last category awards 500 points to the player who beat the Elite Four first, according to playtime. And that player was... Me! Wow, Charles! Um... Yay! Everybody, the crowd goes wild! <laughs> uh, okay, and if we total those all together, which you see at the bottom of your screen now, I, Wow, Charles, scored 8,783 points in total. And I, Yoshi401, scored 9,295 points. I win! <laughs> yes. By a difference of 512, Yoshi 401 takes the first round or competition or match or whatever you want to call this, um, which is great. Yeah! Woo. Hooray! And the crowd goes wild and... yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah. Hopefully we can do something like this again. Um, it will be more organized and uh, more thought out since we know what to expect. And maybe we'll share that one with you, maybe we'll do it live, maybe we'll do... Maybe we'll include you guys, uh, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Mm. I don't know either. Okay. We don't even know. <laughs> but with that, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all 16 of you for being such loyal subscribers and helping me reach my goals. The next subscriber goal special is 32 subscribers, which we are, I believe, 15 away. We're less than halfway there, I think. Yes, more than halfway there. We are more than halfway there, <laughs> depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it. And that is exciting as all get out. Um, what I've planned for you is an opportunity to vote on my next Let's Play. But which ones will I include? If you're a detective, if you're the next Sherlock Holmes, you'll know. Anyway, with that being said, thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations to Yoshi401 for winning the Pokemon Gold Rush. you have anything to say? Hey, wait, 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 what's my prize? Your prize? What do I get? Yeah. You... Um, you can have my shelter. I don't want your shelter. Okay. Your shelter sucked. <laughs> well, the I don't know. I didn't plan a prize. I didn't even think about a prize. This is just the big. There's no prize for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who signed me up for this? <laughs> I want a refund. Uh, th there might be a prize next time. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Do you have anything else to add? So. Okay. You can. Yoshi 401. Yoshi 401. <laughs> Alright. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.